all know a marathon race begins with the first steps, but how a marathon comes about is a little more involved. I took out a bar napkin. It's it's a story that's gotten bigger over the years, but I, <laughs> I had I had pieced together in my mind over time what might make a good marathon, and I wrote it out for everybody. Flying Pig founder Bob Coughlin was on this patio at O'Brien's on Madison Road. The year was 1996. He had just finished a training run that ended across the street at Bob Ronker's running spot. Actually, runners will tell you this, when they get done running, their their engines are revving, you mm -hmm. know, and so the mind was moving, the, the runner's high was had kicked in, and then maybe a beer <laughs> on top of it, you know, we were, we were off and running. The idea went from scribbles on a napkin to attending race director conferences in places like Oregon. And we made up fake business cards that said <laughs> Cincinnati Marathon. It didn't say Flying Pig at that point. And it was helpful because we heard all the problems of marathons, but we also heard the budgets, what it, the issues, what it took to overcome it, what it took. And we made great contacts like the folks at Runner's World. Bob became a runner in the early 90s when he got involved with the Leukemia Society and their team and training charity program. But running was a small part of what had him focused on bringing an event like the Pig to Cincinnati. In early 97, um, my running partner, a guy who I used to run a lot with and a right-hand person of mine at work, um, tragically passed away. And he and I had been working on it and it caused me to, to kind of decide, hey, I want to see if I can have a diversion and work on this. After gaining momentum nationally, the rest was downhill running when it came to greater Cincinnati. I could point to 100 people in this community that got behind it in, in big ways. The only problem might have been the name. That first appeared in this headline in the Cincinnati Enquirer. Polar opposite reactions to the flying pig name. <laughs> people who loved it and people who hated it. And the people who hated it thought it provided an image of Cincinnati as being, you know, overweight. You know, I mean, you think about the pig, right? It's a, it's a pig. And they thought it was dumb. So Bob is more than happy to give credit for the name to the author of that article, Jeff Hobson. I don't think I did it that way. I think they, I think they named it. And I think we had some great headline writers put it in, <laughs> put it in the headline. I think I just, uh, I think I just probably just closed my name, uh, closed my eyes and typed the first paragraph. No matter who came up with it, the name Flying Pig Marathon is now a major source of pride. It represents an event that brings people together and helps programs like City Gospel Mission get folks back on their feet and running. We have so much of that within the race, you know, that kind of community touch to me that just makes it a human interest story as much as it makes it a, a running story. And to think it all began with one man doodling on a napkin on a patio in O'Brienville. I'm thrilled with where it's gotten and I'm thinking about the next 20 years, you know, what are the things we can do to keep, keep it fresh and keep it moving forward.